And one such virtue that which we learned was making the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in plenty in these first 10 days. To discuss more on this, we have in the studios our dear Sheikh, Sheikh Haitham Al Haddad from UK. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khairin, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, you have discussed much about the specific acts of worship that which had to be done in these first 10 days. And primarily, we spoke about the hadith which talks about making the zikr of Allah in plenty. Yes. So, is there anything more to it, Sheikh, that which we need to do as per a zikr is concerned? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I just want to re-emphasize on what we have mentioned in the last episode that during these 10 days the listed ibadat are more beloved to Allah Jalla than being involved in the non-listed ibadat. That's right. So that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Amal Salih When he said Al-Amal Salih he was referring to the listed ibadat because when they said, Ya Rasulullah, even the good deeds in those 10 days are more beloved to Allah than jihad. But jihad is amal salih as well. That's right. It is also included in amal salih. In amal salih. But zikr was specified. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hadith Ibn Abbas, he was talking about al amal salih. In general. In general. He didn't say zikr. And then they compared the amal salih to jihad. So the Sahaba understood that when the Prophet said the amal salih, good deeds, he was referring to specific good deeds. Okay. Otherwise, jihad is part of the good deeds, is the best of the good deeds. Mashallah. But they understood that the Prophet was referring to what? Certain activities that are considered to be the good deeds when it is mentioned unrestrictedly. That's correct. So one hadith is being specified by the other. Yes, of course, Sharia is explained by each other. Okay, the hadith are explained by each other. So when the Prophet Sallallahu said Al-Amal Salih, he was referring to what we said, the listed ibadat. What are the listed ibadat? Are the acts of ibadat that are heavily and strictly regulated by Sharia. Right. They are salah, zakah, siyam, and hajj. And what is related to that, such as the dhikr of Allah Jalla wa That's right. These are heavily regulated by Sharia. The pillars of Islam. The pillars of Islam. And that's why we said that the focus on these activities during these days makes the person more linked and attached to Allah Jalla wa So he will be able to what? to be attached to Allah Jalla wa ala during the non-listed ibadat, during the other activities, during the other human activities. And Allah Jalla wa ala, it chooses certain days and certain times, and he wants us to focus more on the ibadat, on the listed ibadat during these days, such as Ramadan. Ramadan, the scholars, such as Imam Malik and others, used to leave teaching people. SubhanAllah. Although teaching people is the most virtuous or one of the most virtuous activities. Definitely. Yeah? Al-ilm, innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama, qul hal yastawi alladhina ya'alamun wa alladhina la ya'alamun, shahid Allah annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaikat wa ulul ilm, qa'iman bil qist, Allah added ulul ilm to the malaika, in testifying that there is no God but Allah. It's a fard. Yes, and the malaika, they unfold their wings to express their satisfaction for the person who is seeking knowledge, seeking knowledge etc., etc. Alhamdulillah. Yet, yet, Imam Malik used to stop teaching and used to focus on Qur'atul Qur'an in Ramadan. There was a similar narration by Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed, he was asked a question. Then he narrated that Abu Naim told us, one of these scholars, told us that another scholar, when he used to be asked about certain matters related to the science of hadith, he used to say that, oh, 
These are ayam shughul. When he used to be asked about questions related to the science of hadith, in these days, in the 10 days of the hijjah, he used to say these are ayam shughul. Means we are busy in other things in those days. And annasu yusibuhum milal. The people become bored. Either they become bored of doing a lot of ibadah in these days, so maybe I can answer you, or the most prevalent meaning is that if we continue doing ta'aleem, teaching people, etc., etc., and we don't seclude or we don't free ourselves for ibadat in these days, then we might be bored of teaching and not being engaged in dhikr in certain times. We we'll lose out on something that which is more better. Yes. That's why even some scholars used to, as part of glorifying these days, they used to avoid talking about controversial issues during these days. Because, you know, controversial issues, they said, we said, they said, oh, this is a refutation for this, this is an explanation for this, etc. They say, leave this, let us focus on ibadah, and we talk about these things in other days. This is a good point that which you raised, Sheikh, but because we have seen in the masajids nowadays, during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, when we have to keep ourselves busy in the acts of worship, people spend their nights in arguing on fiqh issues, on arguing on issues that which are not worth being discussed that time. We have to be more closer to Allah. So it should be a reminder to our audiences that these are the days wherein even every second is precious. So do not lose on them. We can make discussions, we can do discussions, arguments in the other days. But these days should be specified for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, wallahi, jazakallah khair. This is a very important point. Yani, as you said, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, we used to see it. Even when we were young, we were involved in these things, but we were advised by our elders and our scholars. We used to argue, is the sunnah to pray 8 rak'ah or 20 rak'ah? So when we go to prayer, we are thinking about 8 or 20. We are not thinking about the salah itself. Subhanallah. So that's why the knowledge, the knowledge is meant to get us closer to Allah Jalla Ala, not to argue over the knowledge. When I came to India, yeah, in the plane, there was one of the scholars. So we used to pray in the plane. Alhamdulillah, the is a place for prayer. So we used to go and pray. And I used to push him to lead the salah. He used to lead the salah. First, the salah is very quick. Yeah? You hardly read, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yamdini, Yakan, Abdi, Yakristain, even quickly. Ghayr al-Maghdub, Alim, Al-Dhalin, Ameen, and maybe Surat Qul Hu Allah, and Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Okay. After the salah, he told me that, you know, our scholars said that the dhikr should be done in the right hand. I said, yeah, this is one of the opinions. Okay, طيب, let us do dhikr instead of discussing this mas'ala. <laughs> so we forgot the dhikr because we are arguing, or not arguing, we were discussing it. That's we fine. were discussing this mas'ala. And this happened twice, okay, because we prayed uh, too far. This is a problem. We ignored the spirit of the ibadah and we focused more on the, the physical act of the, the physical activities. So in many ibadat, we lost the spirit. That's why these days come in order to what? To reconnect us with Allah Jalla wa'ala. And Allah Jalla wa'ala is telling us, just free yourself from other activities and be more engaged in the dhikr of Allah Jalla wa'ala. That's why we said that some scholars used to leave the controversial issues to focus on the dhikr and to focus on glorifying these days. Some scholars used to make dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala. Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to have a long string and he used to make dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala every day 12,000 times. Allah. 12,000 times. And he used to say that the diyah of the person is 12,000 dirham or dinar. And Ya Allah, every day I am doing dhikr of 12,000 times in order to buy myself from the fire of hell. 
Allahu Akbar. Okay, these are very, very high examples, but at least we should try to focus on dhikr in these days. Jazakallah, Sheikh. We will take a short break now, inshallah, but we request the audiences to keep their tongue busy in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On the plains of Arafat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. Sheikh, we were discussing about the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its virtue. So, what we were saying is that during these days, let us focus more on the zikr of Allah jalla wa ala. In fact, I had a WhatsApp group with some scholars and some senior students of knowledge. And one time, we were discussing this mas'ala, which is dhikr during the first 10 days of the hijjah And one of the... I believe it was not during the first 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest with you, that was just before the first 10 days Mashallah. of the hijjah And the discussion continued <laughs> in the beginning of the first 10 days of the hijjah But this is the nature when you forget about the spirit of the ibadah and you focus on the outward side of the ibadah. This will happen, you know? So you will be engaged in the discussion and you forget to do the ibadah itself. And we find many tulab al-ilm, yeah? They are good in explaining the mas'ala to you, but when it comes to fasting Mondays, Thursdays, or fasting the three white nights, or even dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala, or even the sunnah and rawatib. Two rak'ah before fajr, four rak'ah before duhur, two rak'ah after duhur, two rak'ah after maghrib, two rak'ah after isha. They neglect them, or they forget about them, as if it is not in their dictionary. But ask them about who said so, do we pray them in the house, or do we pray them outside the house, do we do recite loudly, don't we recite loudly, four rak'ah before duhur with one taslim or two taslim. They can explain it very well. We seek refuge in Allah from such things. And this, as the scholar said, the, the ilm will call the amal. If the amal answers the call of the ilm, then the ilm will stay. Otherwise, the ilm will leave because there is no amal to support it. Right? Anyway, so this is the dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala during these days. So we should do plenty of tahleel, tahleel. takbir, and, and tahmeed. I was saying that in the WhatsApp group, one of the brothers said that his sheikh used to complete the entire Quran during the day of Arafah. Yeah. Then the discussion came as tulab ilm, as you know, scholars. What do we discuss? It should not be completed in less than three days. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> this was not discussed, but it was discussed. Well, is it better to read Quran or is it better to do dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala? It seems that the focus should be on the dhikr, okay, rather than the Quran. But we do know that Quran is, is a dhikr itself. Dhikr itself. But see, the dhikr itself, the dhikr itself is of different types. For example, after we finish the taslim, after we finish salah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What is better? To read Quran or to do Astaghfirullah, 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 La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma inna kanta salamu anka salam tabarakta adha al-jalali wa al-ikram. What is better? Of course, making the tasbih is better. Because this is the sunnah. This is the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. During sujood, the scholar said it is haram. To recite the Quran. To recite the Quran. So, the Qur'an is the best dhikr, definitely, but there are certain times Allah likes certain remembrance, certain words more than others. The kalam is the most beloved kalam to Allah Jalla wa'ala, but Allah Jalla wa'ala is the one who told us in ruku' fa'adhimu fihi al-rabb. In sujood, yes, subhana rabbi al-a'la. This also reminds me, Shaykh, of that famous dua that which was taught by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha that she asked that if I happen to get Laylatul Qadr in my lifetime so what should I say? So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught her the dua Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna Although reciting the Quran and other acts would be more virtuous yeah. but yet Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specified it yes. So we need to do plenty of it yes. I, I hope so I'm right in this Yeah We do 
plenty, but not too busy the whole night in doing that. That may be in certain times in the night, not the whole night just doing this dua. Okay. okay? Unless it is confirmed by the Salaf that they used to do it like this. And it is not confirmed as far as I know. And by the way, one of the Salaf, his opinion was, you can read Quran while doing tawaf. But he said, if you are doing tawaf during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, it's better to do dhikr. So I came across that narration. And if you want me, I can mention the exact narration. This is Ibn Juraij, أمر أبو جراب عطاء وهو أمير مكة أن يحرم في الهلال بين أظهرنا وهو حلال ويعلن بالتلبية وكان أهل مكة فيما مضى على ذلك وفقهاءهم يحبون This is مجاهد This is مجاهد One of the main students of Ibn Abbas as we said and he is the interpreter one of the main scholars of the tafsir of the Quran He said he used to dislike reading Quran in tawaf during the 10 days of the Hijjah and he used to say that it is better to do tasbih, takbir, tahmid, tahleel. Subhanallah. See? Which means that the takbir, the tahmid, the tasbih, etc. are more beloved to Allah Jalla wa ala in specific in those days. And this is the clear statement of the Prophet However, however, some people might be encouraged in reading Quran and finishing one complete Quran, two complete two times, three times, and this might encourage them more during these days, there is no problem. Inshallah. And it is maybe the closest to the dhikr. And by the way, as we are talking about dhikr, it doesn't mean that the person will leave his hizb that he used to read every day. No, he should read because no one should abandon Quran for 10 days. Definitely. No one can say that he would abandon Qur'an for 10 days. No, he should focus on reading his Qur'an. But apart from this hizb that he should read, he can make dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala, tasbih, tahmeed, tahleel, etc. Inshallah. And you know, one time Mujahid, again, he heard one of their scholars making dhikr. So he said, the sunnah is to make it loud during these 10 days. So this is colored, started to make it loud. Then the people from the masjid were reminded. So they started to make it loud. So the whole masjid started to make dhikr of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Not in unison, as we said, not yani, collective dhikr. Then when vali means the area heard about this, all of them started to make loud dhikr of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And as they said, the start of this was from one single person. The ripple effect. Yes, subhanallah. Subhanallah. And this, you know, when the person, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasanatan falahu ajruha wa ajruha man amila biha. The one who establishes a sunnah, the one who establishes a sunnah in Islam, then he will get the reward of it and the similar reward of those who acted upon it because of him. I want to say to my brothers and sisters, and again, this will add to your question. There is a very beautiful hadith. Hadith Abid Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ وَأَزْكَاهَا عِنْدَ مَلِيكِكُمْ وَخَيْرٍ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْ تَلْقَوْ عَدُوَّكُمْ فَتَضْرِبُوا عَنَاقَهُمْ يَضْرِبُوا عَنَاقَكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ الله. The translation of this hadith. Should I tell you about the best of your deeds? And it's better for you than meeting your enemies where you strike their necks and they strike your necks. Become a martyr. Jihad, you will be martyrs and you will be fighting for the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala. Then they said, what is it, Ya Rasulullah? He said, it's better than jihad. And it's better than spending gold and silver for the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala. They said, what is it, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Dhikrullah. Allahu Akbar. Remembrance of Allah. Ibn Hajar, although this hadith is not in Sahih al-Bukhari, it is an authentic hadith reported in Mustadrak al-Hakim. Yeah, authentic hadith. Reported by Abu Darda. And Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was a very, very spiritual person. 
and although he accepted Islam very late, Abu Darda, Ansari, Sahabi, and he accepted Islam and he used to worship an idol and eat it in the evening. Allah. And then they told him, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, his friends, just think about it. Come on, Abu Darda. Anyway, so the Prophet وسلم, said, Dhikrullah is better than jihad, is better than spending your wealth, you know, wealth that is very attached to the heart. Love at the yeah. most. And then you spend it for the sake of Allah Jalla Ala. And dhikr of Allah while you are relaxing and maybe cross legs and drinking tea and you just say tasbih and dhikr is better than jihad. Ibn Hajar said, how? How is it? How is it? So he said that, no, we need to understand that this is the right meaning of dhikr. What is the right meaning of dhikr? Is when the tongue, the tongue and the heart both synchronize in remembrance of Allah. Allah. This synchronization between the tongue and the heart, it means that the heart is moving towards Allah Jalla wa'ala, is remembering Allah Jalla wa'ala all the time, is attached to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Subhanallah. So when the person, he is aware of Allah Jalla wa'ala, remembering Allah Jalla wa'ala, as we said in one of the previous episodes, yes. when the person is attached to Allah Jalla wa'ala all the time, and he's doing this kind of dhikr, so this kind of dhikr will transfer the rest of his life to be an act of ibadah or to be acts of ibadah. Mashallah. So this dhikr is the one who is going to motivate him to do jihad. Subhanallah. Look at the link. We have to understand this link. So this dhikr, without this dhikr, he won't be able to do jihad. Without this dhikr, he will not be encouraged to spend for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Jazakallahu khairan Sheikh. MashaAllah, our audiences must have realized and understood it very rightly that what the power of zikr of Allah is. And this is one of the acts of ibadah which a person can do every time while sitting, while standing, while walking, while sleeping. So we advise and we request the audiences to keep their tongues always busy in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we attain the main purpose of our life. Inshallah, we will continue talking more on the virtues of the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah. But in the coming episodes, until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.